Welcome back folks. It's time for our next 6.5 Grendel video. And today we're gonna to be trying a bullet that I have not tested yet. It is the 120 grain ELD match. A kind viewer sent me a box of these and I'm pretty excited to see how they're gonna shoot. It seems like they are gonna fit my gun really well. I've got an 18 inch Faxon barrel and I was doing some overall length tests with these and found they were hitting the lands of our rifling at about 2.271, 2.272. So we can comfortably get these guys to the rifling. So for today's test, we're gonna shoot 2.260 inches. So 10 or 11, 12 thousandths of jump. That'll be a good place to start from. I also wanna try a powder that I haven't tried in the Grendel yet. This is Shooter's World Match Rifle. I've tested it in 223, and I'm finding that it is extremely close to accurate 2520, which we've found to be a great Grendel powder. The charge weights are very close, the velocities are very close. So I think match rifle might just be perfect in the Grendel. And Shooter's World has got load data for the Grendel. They, they test with the 123 grain Sierra Match King, which is reasonably close to our 120 grain ELD, right? It gives us a general idea about what sort of charge weights we're gonna be needing today. Now, if Shooter's World shoots as well as we hope it does, it's kind of gonna expand this list of really good spherical powders for the Grendel. And these would probably be my top five. Alliant Power Pro Varmint, Accurate 2520, CFE 223, and then Hodgton Lever Evolution, which is extremely similar to, to CFE 223. So at least with the 120 to 123 weight bullets, this would be my recommendation on where to start. Now, does Match Rifle belong in this group? I don't know, we gotta find out today. It needs to earn its spot. Now, having said all that, sometimes with the 6.5 Grendel, I just kind of get sick and tired of constantly chasing velocity. So the other powder I want to shoot is Hodgson H322. We're going to be several hundred feet per second slower than we will be with match rifle, but I want to give it a try. I don't think I've ever shot any uh, powders this fast in my Grendel. I've always kind of focused on the slower stuff that gives the better velocities. And for some reason today, I'm just in the mood. Let's try something faster and see how it does. Maybe we'll find some excellent accuracy. For primers, I want to shoot the same stuff we've been shooting the CCI 450 Magnum small rifle primers that's kind of been our default primer choice in the Grendel lately and they've been doing fine now for brass I've got 50 pieces of Hornady this stuff has been fired three times and it's still in great shape and as you might already be able to tell the primers are already in it which means it's already been full length resized trimmed to length case mouth deburred and chamfered this stuff's ready for powder now for low data starting with our shooters world match rifle like I mentioned they've got some low data for the 123 grain Sierra match king they go up to 30 grains and i think that number will probably be okay for us as well so i want to shoot this stuff up to 30 grains we'll do some three tenths of a grain increments which will have us starting at 28.8 with hodgton h322 we've got some hodgton data that's also for the 123 grain sierra match king they show a starting charge of 24 and a max charge of 26.6 the Sierra data has got their 120 grain Sierra Match King listed with H322, maybe a little bit better match for our 120 today. They show 22.9 up to 25.8. So I want to try and shoot up to 26.0. We'll do three tenths of a grain increments. That puts us starting at 24.8, which our starting charge there, that's only 0.8 grains above the Hodgson starting charge. So I've got a reasonably small window of charge weights here with this fast powder. So that's about it folks, short and sweet here today. I'm gonna get the charges weighed out and we'll seat the bullets. Did I mention that match rifle is a spherical powder? So it's gonna weigh out and meter and measure all just like all of those other spherical powders we were talking about earlier. H322 is an extruded powder, but it is tiny little stuff. So as far as extruded powders go, this stuff should be very easy to work with as well. All right, I'm gonna get some charges weighed out. I'll see you guys over at the press. All right, for bullet seating today, let's use the Forster Ultra Micrometer seating die. I think we've used the Hornady die in the last couple videos, but we'll go with the Forster today. And I need to switch shell holders. There's the right one. I think this one, we screw it down until it touches and then go out at least one turn. There we go. Back it out a whole bunch and we'll see where that puts us. All right, the case fill with both of these powders was really good. I think Shooter's World, our top charges are definitely gonna be compressed and they might be really compressed. So first one, we're trying to dial in 2.260 inches of overall length. That's gonna be way too long. Yeah, we're, we're at 2.5 inches, so let's go down 240 thousandths. Hey, I lost count of my turns. I think that's 200 thousandths, let's try that. 2.313, uh, we need 53 thousandths. Let's go 50 and then we'll seat a couple. 
and take an average. Okay. All right, there's three of them. Let's see what we got. 2.267, 2.268, and 2.264. Tell you what, let's go down seven. Put us pretty darn close. Yeah, this first load, we do still have a little bit of powder moving, so we're not, we're not yet compressed. Okay, this looks perfect. Our longest one is 2.261, and our shortest is 2.257. Just about perfect. So let's switch to the Hornady bullet comparator and we'll get a cartridge-based ogive length. So our cartridge-based ogive, I checked a couple of them. They're all coming out perfectly the same, 1.728 inches. And I'll write that down in my records. And if this ends up being a good seating depth, it'll be a whole lot easier to dial back in with this number than the overall length, which varies by a couple thousandths. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's jump forward to the, the row for the max charge of Shooter's World Match. This guy should be reasonably compressed it didn't feel it didn't feel bad during seating but let's see if our overall length grew a little bit it's 1.730 so that's only two thousandths longer overall length so these might not be compressed as much as i thought they would be let's seed another one and check it yeah this one actually reads 1.729 i'm not feeling anything when i shake it so i think it's a it's a nice full case but we're definitely not compressed like crazy which is good and our h322 powder depth or case fill was a little bit less. So I don't expect these guys. Yeah, this guy, I heard, I heard powder shaking in that guy and it's at 1.728 and the max charge of H322. Let's see how that guy goes. I didn't hear any crunching. Yep, I feel a little bit of powder moving and that max charge is at 1.728. So it looks like probably only our top charge or maybe the top two charges with uh, Shooter's World Match are lightly compressed. It looks like our overall length only grew about a thousandth of an inch, so I'm not going to worry about it at all. I'm going to seat all 50 of these at the exact same die setting. Sometimes when you're really compressing one, you can get quite a bit of overall length growth and you need to tweak your bullet seating die as things get more and more compressed, but it doesn't look like that's the case here. Yeah, and these guys are seating nice and smooth. That's what she looks like. That looks like it ought to shoot awesome. So let's do it. I'll finish these up and we'll get out to the range. All right, folks, it's time to get started. We've got perfect weather for it. A little bit of snow and sleet in the air. Temperature in the mid 30s. We're kicking things off with Shooter's World Match Rifle. Our gun is already warmed up. I shot about 10 rounds through it to get our scope sighted in. And speaking of scopes, this is the 6 to 24 by 50 Vortex Diamondback Tactical. Our barrel is an 18 inch Faxon heavy fluted barrel. I've got my Silencer Co. Omega suppressor on there, my Magneto Speed Chronograph. The upper is a Gibbs side charging upper. The stock is a Magpul PRS with a standard rifle buffer and spring. And the trigger is a LaRue MBT. So I think that just about covers it. Like I mentioned, we're starting with the Shooter's World Match Rifle, 28.8 grains. Let's see if these 120 grain ELD match bullets will shoot. All right, folks, that is an extremely good start, like an excellent start. It's really good shooting for this barrel. Velocity 2396, that's a good velocity number for our starting charge, definitely. So it's all good. The only thing to complain about maybe a little bit here is the standard deviation of 20.0, extreme spread of 51 feet per second. I'd like to see the velocities a little bit tighter, but I often struggle to get consistent velocities out of ball powders, so it's not a huge surprise. So it's all good. We're moving on. Next up is 29.1 grains.
Okay, so it looks like our group opened up a little bit. The spread on our velocity opened up a bunch. Standard deviation of 40.8 and an extreme spread of exactly 100 feet per second. And the average actually went down by five feet per second. That's not good stuff. Let's hope the next group here tightens things back up. 29.4 grains. Our brass has looked good so far. Been keeping an eye on it. Okay, so that's another good group, and we got a nice velocity bump there up to 2456, but standard deviation 33.8, 95 feet per second extreme spread. Now this is not totally surprising. I see the same sort of crap with Accurate 2520 and CFE 223. I can never seem to get the super tight standard deviations out of spherical powders that we often see with extruded powders. That's just the way it is. So next up, 29.7 grains. The brass, still looking good. All right, so our brass still looks good. So that was a good first outing with Shooter's World Match Rifle. They could have been a whole lot worse. So I'm gonna take a little break, let the gun cool down just a little bit, rest my eyes a little bit, and then we'll move on to Hodgson H322, where hopefully those standard deviation numbers are gonna shrink a lot. All right, so I took about a 30 minute break here, and we're ready to move on to H322. Our first charge is 24.8 grains. We're going to be lower on velocity, but hopefully the groups are good. So is that two separate groups or did just one go high? I can't really tell. It's a little bit dark and dingy today. Extremely overcast with this sleet and snow going on. So I can't really tell for sure, but velocity 2276 with an 18.2 feet per second standard deviation. The brass looked great. And also the rounds ejected just fine. I was wondering, like this is the fastest powder I think I've tried in 6.5 Grendel. And this gun does have an adjustable gas block on it that I've got tuned for the slower burning powders. So I thought with this faster powder, we may have a lower gas port pressure and maybe run into some function issues, but no problem whatsoever. They all ejected very nicely. The first shot in that group when the gun was completely cold was the lowest velocity by a little bit. So I'm hoping now maybe we get the gun warmed up. The standard deviations will tighten up even more. Let's find out. 25.1 grains is next. another pretty decent group. 
Our standard deviations are certainly tightening up a little bit. 11.5 that time. Brass looks great. Moving on, 25.4. All right, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah, that's a great group. That's probably one of the best groups we've shot with this barrel. So we may be onto something. This might be my new favorite 6.5 Grendel bullet for this barrel. Brass looks great. Moving on, 25.7 grains. So this was exactly the sort of performance I was hoping for when I decided to pull out H322 for today's test. Like this, good stuff. And the velocities are not as low as I thought they would be. Like we're up to 2366. That's not terrible. So brass looks great. Let's finish it off here. 26.0. Let's shoot them all through one hole. Holy crap, folks. Look at that standard deviation number of 3.8. Our extreme spread on that group was seven feet per second between those five shots. Good stuff. So lots of good stuff here. So let's get back to the bench and talk about what we've learned. All right, so let's start with a little bit of a look at the brass. The first five rows here are from Shooter's World Match Rifle. And there's not a whole lot to show you, but there are a few markings on just this top charge with match rifle. A couple of ejector marks, and there was one that kind of had a, a line where the extractor was. Yeah, here's the one. See that little straight line there? I think we were pretty close to as far as I would want to go here with match rifle. And we made it to 2,510 feet per second, which is very fast for my gun. Or I should say it's, it's, it's fast for 123 grain bullets. So we shouldn't really be able to get a whole lot more here with 120s. But I think 30 grains was a decent sensible max. The primer's fine, you know, nice and rounded. And, you know, the, the signs I'm seeing might have just been from the fact that maybe we got to the point where we were a touch over gassed. So a little gas block adjustment might clear that up. Now over to H322, this is the max charge. These look good as well. Just some really nice looking brass. This is our, yeah, this was our fourth firing on this batch of Hornady brass. It's holding up great. But I've been keeping my charge weights and pressures a little bit more reasonable lately. Because to be honest, in my earlier Grendel videos, I was loading like a moron, trying to squeeze every bit of velocity we could out of this cartridge. This is a 52,000 PSI cartridge. Like that's the Sammy Max pressure for the Grendel, 52,000. So if you're loading up to the point where you're flattening primers or seeing other visible signs of pressure, dude, you're way over. You're way over. So kind of sticking to the book here lately has kept this batch of Hornady Grendel brass in really good shape here. The primer pockets are all still nice and tight. The case heads are in really good shape. And all it took was, you know, trying to do our best to stay within published maximum charges. But you know what? Back when we started with the Grendel a few years ago, there wasn't much published data. So a lot of times we were shooting powder with no guidance whatsoever and just trying not to blow our face off. But these days, more and more data is getting released. And this is the result. Really good brass that can last a bunch of firings. So I've been pretty happy with things lately. Now, the other day, I decided to pick up some Lapua brass. We have shot exclusively Hornady brass in all of my Grendel videos. Back when we started, this was all that was available. 
but Lapua released brass a while back, and my first thought was, there's no way I'm paying a dollar a piece, right? Lapua brass is extremely expensive. It is outstanding brass, but it's expensive, a dollar a piece. And at the time, I was still, you know, shooting loads that were just too damn hot and tearing up brass, and I, my thought was, there's no way I'm ever going to spend the money on Lapua because one load mix up, and I've trashed a bunch of really expensive brass. Well, like I mentioned, we've been being a little more sensible lately. Brass life has been really good. We're not tearing up this brass anymore. So I decided to go ahead and pick up some of the Lapua so we can try it out. So the next Grindle video I make, we will probably go ahead and, and shoot Lapua brass. What I think I'll do, I'll probably start with like a batch of 50 of them. I, I ordered 100, so I'll start with the first 50. I'll probably fire form them off camera. So the next video will be starting with once fired Lapua, or at least that's my plan at this point. Okay, so let's have another look at these groups. When I set out to film this video, this was exactly what I was hoping for. I figured that Shooter's World Match Rifle would give us great velocities and hopefully acceptable to good accuracy. And that's exactly what I would consider this. Like I mentioned, we made it up, our top charge made it up to 2,510 feet per second, which is good for my little 18 inch barrel. The accuracy was pretty darn good. That first group was our best one at 0.652 inches. The middle one wasn't bad, 0.789 inches. Some of the other groups, especially like that fourth one, we just caught a flyer, you know? So just a bad load, but four of the five shot right in there. So I would like to see tighter standard deviation numbers with Shooter's World Match Rifle. Maybe a different primer or our new Lapua Brass can tighten those up a little bit. But like I said, this is kind of what I've come to expect from the lineup of ball powders that I showed earlier with CFE 223 and Accurate 2520. The standard deviation numbers are just never quite as good as we get with a lot of the extruded powders. And speaking of the extruded powders, that second row, man, H322, this was freaking awesome. Now that first group, the very first shot, I think I mentioned out there, I had, I had taken like a 30 minute break, the gun was ice cold, and that very first shot went high. But after that one cold bore shot, the next 24, you look at like the next four shots in that group, plus the whole next three groups, I think all of those shots went into about, well, probably 0.6 inches, like that second group, which, is, which was a 0.644. You could add all of the additional shots from the other groups into that group, and it, would, it wouldn't have gotten any bigger, right? So just amazing performance. Performance like we have never, ever seen with this barrel. Now, the last group opened up a little bit. Our standard deviation was the tightest of the day, but the group kind of went to crap, and there was an interesting shift in point of impact, right? The point of impact was dead stable for those first four groups, and then all of a sudden it jumps up, and the group goes to crap. So if we kept pushing a little bit farther with uh, H322, maybe we would find that that point of impact would stay up there, but maybe the groups would tighten up. Sometimes we see that. Loads kind of go through these weird point of impact transitions. The velocity kind of blew me away here. I expected to be starting down in the 2100 and something feet per second range, but we started out at 2276, made it all the way up to 2397. So basically 2400 feet per second, that is not bad at all. I didn't think we'd get there. So excellent first test with H322. We're gonna be testing that powder up more in the future, no doubt about it. And probably some more fast powders. Like I've been making, I've got a six PPC bench rest rifle. I've made a couple of videos on that. And six PPC and 6.5 Grendel are pretty darn close. They both share the apparent case. The 220 Russian is the parent case. And in the six PPC, H322 is a very popular powder. And Vitavori N133 and Accurate LT32 and Hodgson Benchmark, those uh, kind of that range of powders which you'd have to consider pretty darn fast for the Grendel. I wanna explore that a little bit after seeing how H322 performed today. So I think we might have landed on the perfect bullet for my gun. And I've been searching for it since I got this barrel. I never really had that bullet I can really depend on. With my old Grendel barrel, it was the 123 grain Sierra Match King. But this barrel doesn't really shoot great with that bullet. It shoots okay with that bullet, but it doesn't shoot lights out. So this 120 grain ELD Match is the best candidate we've run into so far. Now the story about why the viewer sent me these is kind of funny. I was looking for the email earlier whenever I was filming the beginning of this video and I couldn't find the stupid email and I finally found it. Here's the story. The viewer's name is Blake and thank you very much, Blake. But Blake's wife was at the store, asked him, hey, do you need me to pick you up anything? 
And he said, yes, pick me up some 123 grain ELDs. Apparently that's his favorite bullet. Well, she brought home these 120 grain ELDs. So instead of seeing that as an opportunity to test something new, he decided to box them up and send them to a jackass on YouTube. So his loss is our gain. His wife clearly knows how to pick bullets and I'm happy this all worked out the way it did. Now speaking of the 123 grain ELD, I thought you guys might wanna see this bullet next to the, to the 123. You can see the 123 is a little bit longer but they, they appear to have nearly identical bearing surfaces, like the length of the bearing surface and, and the length of the boat tail is pretty close. So the 123 is just a little bit longer, appears to have a little bit skinnier ogive up there, but reasonably close to one another. I'm trying to remember if I actually shot the 123 ELD in this barrel. I think I have, at least a few test rounds. We haven't done any extensive testing with it. I think I was shooting mainly the 123 Sierra Match Kings expecting this gun to shoot him great and maybe I've just neglected the 123 ELD. So there's still a lot of testing to do with this new fax and barrel. I mean, I'm calling it new, but I've had it a little while, but a lot of the time we've had it, I've been screwing around with like heavy bullets. I was shooting 140s and 135s in it, just kind of messing around and it shot them pretty well. But I need to focus in. I need to find out what works and what doesn't work in this 120 to 123 grain weight class, which is where the Grendel really shines. Now we had pretty good luck in the last Grendel video with the 107 grain Sierra Match King. So I've got some more work to do with the lighter bullets. I've got like an 85 grainer I need to test as well. So we've got some light bullets to test. That's going to be coming before too long. But after today's results, I think the next video will be Lapua Brass. We'll shoot this 120 grain ELD match. I've already ordered 200 more of them. So I've got 250 more to play with to find out if we can duplicate today's results. I think it's going to be IMR 8208 XBR and probably AR Comp. These are both extruded powders. I've had luck with both of them in the 6.5 Grindle. We should see a little bit better velocities with these than we did with H322. So these might be a little bit more practical, but that's the plan going forward. So I think that's pretty much it, folks. Exciting results today. Thanks again to Blake for sending these bullets. I appreciate you guys joining me, and I'll see you next time.